everyone, my name is Cyril and today I'll show you my journey with the new game I've been working on on after finishing the last few projects, The Alchemist and also Voxel Recreation of Space Race. If you're interested in playing those or see behind the scenes, you can find the links in the description of this video, but I digress. Today's video will be the first one in the devlog series about a project I for now call The Taste of Power. I got the idea to make a short RPG fighting game with a moral lesson while on the walk and I began working on it after my friend created artwork for it, containing the two main characters and a battle stands facing each other, representing what I envisioned to be the final battle at that point. Needless to say, with the character concept done, I started working on modeling. If you have been watching this channel for a longer time, you might already know that I'm a huge fan of this blocky game Minecraft and that sometimes I post videos about the voxel art, so that's the medium I went with. For the modeling software, I used Magic of Voxel, which is really simple to use and is also free, and so I started to experiment with styles. My first attempt ended up looking quite blocky with really distinctive joints compared to the rest of the model, which was much bulkier in shape. It sort of reminded me of that Amazon female warrior trope. Moving on to the second attempt, this one was much more detailed and I personally would compare it to the game Teardown, meaning higher voxel count, much less blocky and what could say somewhat realistic. Needless to say, even though I absolutely loved the way this looked, I was kind of skeptical towards animating this. I should probably mention that so far I have no experience using any animating software or any experience with rigging or 3D animation itself and for this project I chose Blender as a tool that I will work with and learn while doing so. It was at this point that I decided to not make more concepts but instead try to figure out a way I could export the models into Blender so I can animate them and then export them directly into Unity without spending too much time on UV mapping or optimizing the mesh. Keep in mind, Magic of Voxel export works a bit weird and can produce a lot of unnecessary vertices etc. So after many hours of trying out different approaches as well as installing auto modeling software, I eventually stumbled across a blog that mentioned trying Google Voxel software as an intermediary between Magicka and Blender. And after trying it out, I was honestly surprised at how well it worked. I actually didn't have to do any UV mapping or making sure that there would be weird bleeding between edges. So going back to the modeling, the last model I made was the most simple one I'd say. Heavily focused on preserving the idea of nimble warrior slash thief female while being simple as I said. And this is what the final result looked like. I eventually ended up removing the cape as yet again I did not want to make myself hate everything by making things too complicated complicated for myself for now. I might add it later once I'll get the other things under my thumb. One more thing before I'll go to my expert workflow. At this point in time I wanted to try something Zach Soros, sorry if I mispronounced that, referred to in his blog as Rigid Body Animation. I'll link in the description to it but pretty much it would mean one bone equals one mesh aka one part of the body and anything done to the bone would be also applied to the mesh itself without deforming it. That is the reason why my model is separated into different body parts. So now for the workflow. First step is to export all the pieces you want as that box files. Afterwards, import them into Goxel. You will have to do this for each part individually and just export it again as .gltf, which is supported by most 3D software. Now import all the pieces into Blender and for each individual node, just select all the parts using A and press Ctrl J to join them into one. You should now have nodes for each of the body parts. Afterwards, I recommend naming each part and deleting the nodes itself, leaving only the mesh. To change the origin, click on the mesh, then in the object mode right click and set origin to center of the mass surface. Now if you press Alt J, your model will move to your world origin. If you wish to move it to your cursor, just hold Shift S and select selection to cursor. Anyways, once I had everything named and had pivot points in the right place, I assembled the pieces together so that every Everything is in the place as it was in the Magicka. Now you really have two options. A, you can be like me and try to rig and animate everything yourself which is what I tried at first, or option B, join everything together, export as FBX, upload to Mixamo, download the t-pose with skin and you're good to go to Unity. But since this is a devlog, let me just show you how option A looked like for a complete beginner into Blender. After watching a couple of tutorials on rigging, as always, links are in the description, I got something that resembled a humanoid rig. Afterwards, I tried creating IK or inverse kinematic bones to make animating easier supposedly for both shoulders and knees. Remember when I said to delete the nose themselves? Well, if you didn't, and you will do it now, get ready to start placing everything back into the place one more time. After that was done, I went to parent the bones to their respective meshes. You can do this by adding an object constraint, relationship, child of, and then select your armature and the specific bone. This will also completely destroy the position of the mesh, so just click set inverse and adjust if necessary. If you did everything correctly, you should have a working rig. After this, I watched the videos on animation. Needless to say, I became terrified of it and instead turned to the option B straight away, knowing I will 
have to sacrifice rigid body animation for soft body. I wasn't hoping for good results, especially since last time I tried Maximo, it completely ruined the mesh for some reason. But to my surprise, it worked amazingly well this time, enough where I decided I'll stick with this style and I'll go back to the rigid body animation another time, you know, once I learn about this blender add-on called Rigify. Anyways, going back to the Maximo, for the download settings, go with FBX for Unity, 60 frames per second, and unless you're exporting to T-Pose, just go without skin. Also, just remember, another reason why I even tried Maximo in the first place was that while learning about animation, I started wondering how I would set everything up in Unity, and I found this really cool Unity standard asset that had a working third-person camera. Needless to say, once I imported my mesh into Unity, I was even more surprised as everything I needed to do to get the thing working with URP, aka the Universal Render Pipeline, which is one of the templates you can use for your Unity project, was upgrading the material and changing the avatar and player armature animator components to the one that I got generated from the mesh. If yours didn't generate, just change in rig options and import animation type to humanoid and create from this model and you're done. If you've done everything correctly, your model will also be pre-animated from the controller and your character will be able to stand idle, walk, run and jump and each landing animation is different based on the first three clips. One of the last things I worked on was how I'm going to create the environment for the game. Unity does have a terrain tool, but as far as I was able to tell, it doesn't have anything that would enable to work with voxels or pixelized terrain, and that is the style I want, and I don't think making everything magic I would be too good for the performance side of things. So after a couple of hours of watching videos about shaders and trying some free assets that didn't work, I found this cool neat trick that if you set your camera output to render texture, and then you display that texture on canvas as a raw image, you can set the resolution to something small like 160 by 90, meaning you still keep the aspect ratio, and you can have this retro feel to your game. Quick tip, make sure to set filter mode to point if you don't want that weird blurry image. But anyways, after I made some simple mountains around the level and tested it with pixelation trick, this is how the game or prototype looked like. It's important to probably mention this, but it was at this point that I wondered whether I would still turn this game into a fighting one, or whether I will take an atmospheric story exploration approach. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see, as this is the end of the first devlog of Taste of Power. If you enjoyed watching this video and want me to continue, smash like and sub, and if you want to help me, comment anything that comes to your mind, any suggestions, critique, as keep in mind I'm beginner and I'll gladly appreciate any learning materials or tips and tricks from more experienced users, but stay tuned for more, as in the next episode I will most likely tackle the world building or some gameplay mechanics, we will see. So anyways, thank you for your time, I wish you a good rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.